mind is the forerunner of all states. Mind is chief. Mind made, are they? If one speaks or acts with an unwholesome mind, because of that, suffering follows one. Even as the wheel follows the hoof of a draft ox. Mind is a forerunner of all states. Mind is chief. Mind made are they. If one speaks or acts with a pure mind, because of that, happiness follows one, even as one shadow that never leaves. Hatred is never appeased by hatred. Only by love is hatred appeased. This is the eternal law. Whoever lives contemplating pleasant things with senses unrestrained, in food immoderate, indolent, inactive, they verily Mara overthrow as a wind overthrows a weak tree. Whoever lives contemplating the impurities, with senses restrained, in food moderate, full of faith, full of sustained energy, them Mara overthrows not as the wind does not overthrow a rocky mountain. In the unessential, they imagine the essential. In the essential, they see the unessential. Those who entertain such wrong thoughts never realize the essence. What is essential they regard as essential. What is unessential they regard as unessential. They who entertain such right thoughts realize the essence. Even as rain penetrates an ill-thatched house, so does lust penetrate an undeveloped mind. Even as rain does not penetrate a well-thatched house, so does lust not penetrate a well-developed mind. Though much they recite the sacred texts, but act not accordingly, that heedless person is like a cowherd who counts others' cows. They have no share in the fruits of the holy life. Though little they recite the sacred texts, but act in accordance with the teaching. Forsaking lust, hatred and ignorance. Truly knowing, with mind well freed. Clinging to naught here and hereafter. They share the fruits of the holy life.
Mindfulness is the path to the deathless. Heedlessness is the path to death. The mindful do not die. The heedless are like the dead. Distinctly understanding this difference, the wise, intent on mindfulness, rejoice in heedfulness, delighting in the realm of the noble ones. The constantly meditative, the ever steadfast ones, realize the bond free, supreme Nibbana. One who delights in heedfulness and looks with fear on heedlessness advances like fire, burning all fetters, great and small. One who delights in heedfulness and looks with fear on heedlessness is not liable to fall. They are in the presence of of Nibbana. The flickering fickle mind, difficult to guard, difficult to control. The wise person straightens it as a fletcher straightens an arrow. Like a fish that is drawn from its watery abode, and thrown upon land. Even so does this mind flutter. Hence should the realm of the passions be shunned. The mind is very difficult to perceive, very delicate and subtle. It moves and lands wherever it pleases. The wise person should guard their mind, for a guarded mind brings happiness. Faring far, Wandering alone, bodiless, lying in a cave, is the mind. Those who subdue it are freed from the bond of Mara. One whose mind is not steadfast, one who knows not the true doctrine. Those whose confidence wavers, the wisdom of such a one will never be perfect. One whose mind is not soaked by lust, who is not affected by hatred who has transcended both good and evil. For such a vigilant one, there is no fear. Realising that this body is as fragile as a jar, establishing this mind as firm as a fortified city. One should attack Mara with the weapon of wisdom. They should guard their conquest and be without attachment.
Whatever harm a foe may do to a foe, or a hater to a hater, yet an ill-directed mind can do to oneself far greater harm. What neither mother nor father nor any other relative can do, a well-directed mind does and thereby elevates one. Knowing that this body is like foam and comprehending its mirage nature, one should destroy the flower shafts of sensual passion and pass beyond the sight of the king of death. One who gathers flowers of sensual pleasure, whose mind is entangled, Death carries off as a great flood sweeps away a sleeping village. One should not pry into the faults of others, into things done and left undone by others. One should rather consider what by oneself is done and left undone. As a flower that is lovely and beautiful, but is scentless, even so fruitless is the well-spoken word of one who does not practice it. As a flower that is lovely, beautiful, and scent laden, even so fruitful is the well-spoken word of one who practices it. Mara finds not the path of those who are virtuous, careful in living, and freed by right knowledge. I have sons. I have wealth. The ignorant one thus thinks they are secured. Indeed, they themselves are not their own. How can sons or wealth be theirs? The fool who knows that they are a fool is for that very reason a wise person. The fool who thinks that they are wise is called a fool indeed. An intelligent person even though they are associated with a wise one only for a moment, quickly understands the Dharma, just as the tongue knows the taste of soup.
so long as an evil deed does not ripen. The fool thinks that it is like honey, but when it ripens, then the fool comes to grief. One whose passions are destroyed, who is indifferent to food, whose object is the void and the unconditioned freedom. Their path cannot be traced, like that of birds through the sky. Through many a birth I have wandered in this round of lives and deaths, vainly seeking the builder of this dwelling. Sorrowful is repeated birth. O house builder, you are seen. All your rafters and your ridge pole are broken. The mind is dissolved and the extinction of desire has been achieved. Arise, be not negligent, lead a righteous life, the righteous person lives happily both in this world and in the next. To cease from all evil, to cultivate good, to purify one's mind. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas.